to that, we need to talk about the biggest story to come out of the World Series Oof. of Poker this week. And that is one Mark, Martin Cabral in Man. the 250,000 Super High Roller. Man, I, I get the weekends off. It was Father's Day weekend. I was supposed to relax with my feet up. Nah, poker was like, sorry, Jesse, <laughs> you're going to be watching this quite a bit. It was insane. I'm sure all of you have seen it, but we have some clips we're going to show uh, during this segment as well. Um, Chad, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say here. It's, yeah. It's spicy. So if you're not familiar with who Martin Cabral is, he's a, a player out of the Czech Republic, very polarizing figure because of his antics and what he does at the poker table. He talks to a lot of opponent opponents, gets under their skin. A lot of people find him very annoying. And not only that, he just does stuff at the table that raises a lot of eyebrows, the way he acts, the way his mannerisms are, and raises a lot of suspicion as well. And I think that's really where things went off the rails with this $250,000 super high roller is that some big name pros ended up speaking out against him, basically accusing him of cheating and marking cards, or so they thought that that's what was happening. I mean, it's it's special, really, because it's part of the 250K tournament. I mean, that's, that's the biggest deal. Like, if something like this happened in, like, a 1K... I, and we may not even hear about it, right? But this community is so like close knit. It's so like well known. Like these guys all play together all the time. I mean, they just and so when something like this happens, where people are making accusations, when people are saying, "Hey, something just doesn't feel right," it it just spreads like wildfire. And that's what we saw. We saw tweets from pros like Dan Smith, of course, Phil Helmuth, Andrew, Andrew Robel. We saw lots of people weighing in, not just people at home watching and and, and sharing poker clips. But people who are there in the event saying, yeah, something feels a little bit off. Yeah, it was Andrew Robles tweet that really got things rolling. He says, how is Martin Cabral not banned from the WSOP? He makes any tournament no fun and for anyone uh, <coughs> makes it makes it any tournament no fun for anyone. And on top of it, I've seen him mark cards in every tournament I've ever played with him. Uh, and that really was the adding fuel to the fire. People started watching his play. There's some clips that we're going to show you, you know, right now as we're talking. Just suspicious behavior, the way he handles the cards, the way he stands up, the way he looks at cards. Uh, it definitely raises, as I said, some eyebrows and some suspicions. It's it's a hot topic right now. Yeah. So, in fact, let's go ahead and show some clips right now. Uh, let's show, you know, like, as we're talking, Chad, we're going to play a few five second clips. We pull, we pull off Twitter, uh, people at home grabbing little moments that they saw of just finger movement, kind of weird, some sticky cards, which is a little, <clears throat> I mean, what, what, what was he eating Cheetos? I mean, this Cheetos <laughs> stick, I don't know what, what like, fruit, fruit, fruit roll up. I mean, what could be sticky, Chad? I mean, maybe Sour Patch Kids from Phil Helmuth. Oh, that's true. You know, he was in the tournament. Maybe yeah. it's Helmuth, you know, got them all sticky. I don't yeah. know. Here's my thing. I've had cards stick to my hands a little bit before, you know, whether you're just sweaty, depending on the cards. I didn't think that was terribly suspicious. Definitely the way he kind of pinches into some of the cards is, is strange. But I just would, if he's really marking cards, would, is he going to do it at a live stream final table so blatantly like that? Is he I just, and from what I understand, the WSOP did look at the cards and there was no indication that they were marked. Now, the WSOP hasn't officially said anything uh, aside from to the Las Vegas Review Journal saying that they're aware of the situation. It's an ongoing investigation. I've got the quote yeah, right here. Read I'll, it, read yeah, it. I'll read it. Uh, from WSOP to the Las Vegas Review Journal. While we do not discuss specific security protocols used to monitor players and gaming equipment, the integrity of the game remains paramount, and we can assure fellow patrons that we are taking these allegations very seriously. The WCP said in a statement to the review journal, as this is an ongoing investigation, there is no further comment on the matter at this time. Yeah. And from what I, like I say, what I've been hearing, what I've been told, that they did look at the cards and they did not come to you know, a conclusion that they were marked or anything like that. Right. Uh, and that's not to say that it doesn't, didn't happen, hasn't happened in the past, things like that. Right. But in this particular instance, uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, whether or not there is an ongoing investigation, like they say, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. So let's listen to a clip from Dan Smith. Uh, Dan weighs in a little bit. We're going to play a little 30-second clip. It's a longer clip. You can watch it. Check it out on Twitter. We'll, we'll throw links somewhere in this podcast in the descriptions, I'm sure. But uh, check out this clip uh, and hear what Dan Smith has to say. It's paint, but it's a king. GG, Dan. Good luck, most of you. Okay. I hope you get barred. I will, I will be what? I hope you get barred. What does it mean? Ben. Why? Your, your antics are the worst than anyone I've ever Everyone else is great playing. Okay. And Dan. Somebody must be worse. Good game. And as you exited the table, I heard you mention a comment to Martin. Do you want to elaborate on what you meant there? Martin's antics at the table are worse than anyone I've played with. Um, people were speculating 
Like there were a lot of discussions about whether he was marking cards. Um, whether or not that's true, playing with him is unbelievably unpleasant. He's rude. He takes the full 30 seconds every time. And uh, last night playing with him, it felt like something not kosher was going on. Um, can't know for sure, uh, but I think it's ridiculous that he's allowed to play in the tournament. All right, there you can see how Martin Cabral gets under people's skin. I mean, that was on the Poker Go live stream from the final table. Dan Smith was upset. A lot of other players were too. Here's my theory, Jesse. Yeah. It's a, just a theory. But I've known Martin Cabral as a player. I don't know him personally, but I've seen him over in Europe, a lot of colleagues. This, These antics and his behavior is not unusual. This is who he is, whether it's in a $250,000 super high roller or a $300 daily at King's Casino. This is who he is as, as a poker player. And I don't think it's beyond him. He doesn't care what people think. He, he doesn't care about any of that nonsense. He just wants to win at poker and have an edge. So I don't think it's beyond him to want people to think that he's marking cards and that he is cheating. And so you do see these behaviors where he's staring at people's cards, where he's standing up looking. It makes it very suspicious, right? But if he's not cheating, if he's not doing anything, but he's still exhibiting that behavior, yeah, it's going to rile up the other players. It's going to make them get frustrated. It's going to make them think that he's cheating. And that maybe, in his mind, gives him an edge. I mean, he is a two-time bracelet winner. He finished third in this $250,000 super high roller for, I think it was $2.2 million. Uh, and there's no denying that his the way he is and his antics really irk people. You've seen it with Dan Smith just now. Was the 250K a three-day or four-day event? I think it was four. Four, I think you're right. So what I heard was on day three, that's when WSP officials made a ruling that you could not stand up anymore. That was And that was geared towards, of course, Cabral, right. based on some of the things he was doing. And on day four, during the final table, he did stand up. Floor was called over, and it was mentioned by one of the players at the table, like, this is a, a ruling for you to, pr to protect us. Like, it's, it's wild how Dan Smith has to come out and say these, put his feelings out there about what was going on. And it's just unfortunate, man. I mean, it's one of those things where was he just doing this to manipulate the feelings of the players and to try to get an edge in that way? Was he actually, <clears throat> I mean, seems like he wasn't actually damaging anything or I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate yeah. that on the, on the biggest buying event of the WCP schedule, 5 million up top, like that this is something that we have to, talk about yeah you, you have the las vegas review journal in uh, in these mainstream i'm looking right now cbs sports usa today uh, bleacher report <clears> they're <throat> talking headlines wsop cheating associating those two things are, are not good for anybody no, it's not good not. for the wsop not good for the players not good for the event as a whole and as you said in the the biggest event of the summer on the main stage being streamed yeah it's ugly it's a it's a very big black eye and uh I don't know what the answer is, right? So th there's one thing that the top pros agree on. They don't want to play with Martin Cabral. He, they, he makes it a miserable experience for them, whether regardless if he's marking cards or cheating or any of that. They just don't like playing with him because of his antics. Yeah. yeah. What was that hand? Aces versus was it King Four offsuit, where he just, he took two minutes and he asked for a count. He did all this like antics when he, obviously he wasn't going to. I mean, right. there, there was, I mean, it's just it, there's just a lot to him. There's a lot to him. I usually love antics. I mean, I, I, I love. You know, talk of the table. I love certain things about getting people under people's skin. The old Helmuth versus Manasau or or Tony G. Like I love that kind of stuff. This I can't stand it. I can't stomach it. Uh, it just made me sick watching it too. It's like this is so. Is, is, is there totally anything terrible. that can be done? You know, Andrew Robo asked, "Why isn't he banned from the WSOP?" Now, I don't think somebody should be banned just because people don't like him. Right? right. He's got to have some sort. Of, if he is marking cards, of course, needs to be to be banned permanently forever. But if he's not, is there anything that can be done in that regard? If, they, if these high rollers say, we just don't want to play with them. I mean, it's, see, here's the problem. WSP is owned by a, 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 you know, a publicly owned, right? I mean, Caesars is something people can buy stock in right. for sure. <clears throat> and that's just where things get to a point. I mean, it's, it's just not in. Yeah. If, think, if this was Benny Binion's place, if this is <laughs> Benny Binion, he rode on a horse he got off and said, which one's giving you trouble? He'd put a fucking lasso around him and pull him out and tie him up on the street and leave him on the corner and call the mayor, Oscar, and say, right. hey, pick this guy up, take him out to the desert. Like, that's just not where we, it's just not 2023, guys. Like, we, I mean, look, there are people out there who are playing in all sorts of bracelet events who we've talked about in other podcasts and articles where the headline says, accused cheaters. And there's other stuff that we've just moved on with. I mean, 
I just, I don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah, I, I think it's tough, especially at the World Series of Poker. You might have a little more success doing it at like a Poker Go studio where it's a little more private, yeah. uh, where they could kind of maybe combine and the players say, hey, we're not playing if he's playing and, and they could do something there. But the World Series, definitely a lot harder. I don't think it's the end of the saga because Martin Cabral did address all of this on Twitter once it, it uh, started to blow up. And I just want to read it real quick. He says, on behalf of yesterday's situation, I feel necessary to speak up. Andrew Robo yesterday posted on Twitter an accusation that I'm marking cards and cheating in poker tournaments. I was shocked by how quickly people took it as true. Pure statement with no evidence and started media blizzard in which I am portrayed as a cheater. Uh, there's more to it, but the, he gets to basically, he's going to do some legal action against Andrew Robo by the sound of it. I mean, it's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're trying to tell that story, people are going to believe it. People out there are going to believe it. And social media, what it is today, things can blow up in a heartbeat. And, and minutes after being online, like it could just be, the, the, everyone just believes. And it, it's why, I mean, just, just don't, just don't do it. If, if you, uh, I mean, if, if you've got something with your hand, like you've got a cramp in your hand and you're, you're doing something weird, your fingers and maybe just say it. If you, uh, if your hand if cards are sticking to your hand a little bit, you know, maybe, you know, it's just but this, it, all of it together. I understand why the players were feeling the way they, and I understand why people on Twitter are saying the things they are because you take it at face value. It looks pretty bad. Yeah. But, I, I, I yeah. got to give WSOP credit and I wish they and other tournament directors use their discretion a little bit more, do things that will help prevent such things, right? So they said no standing at the final table yeah. because they were worried about it. Absolutely. They could uh, do, you know, institute some other things and be a little more strict to help uh, to rein it in. But uh, it's different. The 250K, as we talked about with Jason Kuhn in our last episode, is a whole different stratosphere of, of players and operations. And uh, it's just a shame that the, that this event, the biggest of the summer, lots of big names, is really going to be overshadowed by this. And the World Series of Poker as a whole in 2023, this is going to be one of the biggest stories to come out of it at the end of the day. I mean, let's hope not. Let's hope that we break the main event record. Let's hope that, you know, other, other storylines do get their, do get their moment in the, in the sun, in the spotlight. And I, I mean, for me, it is a big story, but based on what I've heard already, like I'm, I'm ready to move on almost. Like I do want to see what comes of it, but I, I just, I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to do this. I don't think anyone's going to mark cards or, or whatever the hell else he was doing with the sticky stuff. I don't think they would do it on the stage. With cameras, with security, with all this, why would you put your whole career at risk? Right. That's why right? I think he was doing those sort of things. To knowing get under people's skin. Yeah, right? knowing he's not really doing it yeah. so that they can examine the cards and not going to find anything. And we, we don't know this for sure. That's right. what happened. Obviously, we can't. But but it's just... It's just uh, it, Martin Cabral can be devious, and that would be a devious thing to do, trying to get an edge. And again, we don't know, but that's just yeah. a working theory. Uh, you know, if he wasn't, cheating if he wasn't marking cards and that seems to be the case because as i said what we're hearing is wsop looked at the cards didn't see any markings um it's it's a weird spot right because he is taking a lot of heat from this he, like yeah. he says he's being accused of cheating in, in the mainstream press he's got family he's got businesses it's affecting his reputation but at the same time it's hard to be too sympathetic because you're what you're exhibiting what you're doing that's what you're tr either trying to make people think or right. it's just naturally going to make you, people think that. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, I think we can just both say, we don't know what happened. We're just going to move on. So let's go ahead and <laughs> break away from Cabral.